Welcome back to the patio. Hey, today we're doing something just a little different. I've had so many questions asking me about this Pit Boss pellet grill that I use all the time. So I thought I'd do an eighth month review. get started so this pit boss right here is a walmart exclusive and once you get this thing out of the box it's going to take two people to assemble it i did 95 percent of this on my own but when it comes to attaching these legs right here you have to have two people you just can't reach the bolts so when you start looking at this grill you have three racks which i think is a uh, it's really plenty. It's plenty to cook for just a family of four or even a, even a small party. You can get about five racks of ribs on here. With these three racks, you can see how close they're spaced together. I typically take both of these racks out and only use the bottom. And you can get three racks of ribs on here. And if you wanted to throw this in, you could definitely do it and get another rack. But pork butts, you're just doing a couple, one on each side. You might be able to get three. And like I said, again, I'm typically taking these two racks out just because they're so close together. And they say you're getting a thousand square inches of cooking space. So you can take that for what it's worth. You'll also get four shelving areas. Once you get this thing together, and like I said, you get this, which folds down, which I do like a lot. And you'll also get this heavy duty shelf right here. And then a big shelf underneath here to put your charcoal or whatever accessories that you have. And I believe they count this as a shelf as well, your pellet hopper. And also with your pellet hopper, I do like it. It does, you can get an overnight cook with this. They say it holds 20 pounds. I've seen more or less, you get about 18 with this thing. 20 just seems like it might, if it's completely empty, you might be able to get it all the way to the top and, and maybe that'll hold true. So the grill does come with a built-in thermometer and it comes with two probes that I think are junk. That lasted me a couple weeks and both of the probes by then gave out. But you do have these two little holes that you can put it in your grill here so you can monitor two different types of meat or monitor, monitor your rack temperature. But anyway, another thing to look at on here that I really like is this auger door right here. If you ever have a pellet jam or whatever, they come with this little easy access door so you can pull this thing out, take your pellets out that jammed it up, and then just continue. Right above here, you have your pellet window, so you can kind of monitor how many pellets you have. But your grill is smart enough to tell you that you're running low on pellets through the app, so you can always come out here periodically if you need to and uh, add some more pellets. But like I said, this thing with a full hopper will go overnight, no problem. And this thing does not like cheap pellets. I've never really tried that many. I typically use Kingsford in this and I've had no problem whatsoever. But I have tried some of those Jack Daniels pellets that I got from Academy and a few others that were like $9 a bag. You could just tell when that auger was running, it was just struggling. You'll know what I'm talking about if you ever do it. Another little cool feature with this grill is this little pellet door right here. If you ever want to clean your, your uh, grill out and add new pellets, all you do is open this little door and pull a latch and all the pellets come out. So I thought that was a pretty neat feature for this. So a couple things with the control panel that you might want to know before you buy this grill. When you turn it on, it goes in 25 degree increments, which it hits all your big numbers as far as I'm concerned, 225, 250, 275. And then it goes from five all the way up to 500 or high, which it will get above 500 for searing steaks or whatever you might wanna do with it. So we'll get that turned off and then we'll go back to the grill. Things that I didn't mention with this thing is it does have this deflector heat plate with the sear plate for searing steaks or whatever you want to do. And then it also has the light in the grill, which you can barely see. And I think it's kind of worthless because every time you smoke something, it's just going to get covered up every single time. And another thing that I really do like are these porcelain grates right here. I don't like the cast iron. I know the Pro Series comes with the cast iron grates and that's just a lot of trouble to me. I just like the ease that it takes to clean it. 
and uh, you know, you just wipe it down and you're good to go. No greasing, none of that. Also, down here, you'll see you got a storage shelf right here if you want to put tongs or whatever, but be careful as well, because if you have any rubber or anything on your cooking utensils, it gets extremely hot down here. Another thing to mention about this grill that I like is it's got an ash clean out, but it is extremely hard to get out. I don't know why. It just makes for easy cleanup, so you don't have to clean this thing as much. And you'll know when it's dirty too, because you'll have smoke coming out of this hopper box. That's when you know, hey, I need to dump this ashtray out. It does come with these heavy duty locking casters on the bottom. You'll see right here, these, this, both of these ends have the caster wheels with the locking mechanisms and the other ones are just straight forward. So it does roll around on rough surfaces pretty good. And you also have this adjustable stack right here. You can move it up or down. I've never really seen this thing to make a big difference when I'm cooking, but hey, maybe you'll find a, a purpose for it. I haven't. I've spun it all the way up, all the way down. Can't really see a big difference other than you'll let your heat out in the winter. But in the summer, I keep it wide open and just keep that oxygen flowing with it. Opening this thing back up, a few things that I don't like about this grill, especially when I first got it, is that it does not put out a lot of smoke. If you're thinking that you're gonna set some ribs and a pork butt on this thing, and then just set it and forget it, and you're gonna have that good smoky flavor like you would on an offset, or just like a wood and charcoal burning Weber Smoky Mountain or pit barrel or green egg, whatever you have, you're not gonna get anything close to that. It tastes more like an oven to me. A lot of people have said, you know, put it on 170 and just let it smoke or whatever and then bring it up to 225. But the reality of this thing is I don't want to cook ribs for 10 hours. There's no point in that. So what I recommend if you do get this is the smoke tube. This thing cost $19 at Lowe's and it solved that major issue because I was getting ready to take this thing back just because I wasn't getting the flavor that I wanted. This one little smoke tube right here solved all my problems with that. Another thing that I faced when I first got this thing was once I started cooking on it, everything in the middle right here just got burnt completely up. I think it was, I don't know, uh, one of the first months that I got it, we put a bunch of appetizers on here. Everything to this side and this side was good to go. Anything in this area, even right here, was just burnt to a crisp. I wanna say that that grill, I had it on 350 and we were rocking 450, 500 in the center. It was ridiculous. If anything pit boss needs to do, they need to fix it. But I saw a lot of other people complaining about it. And I bought this gigantic deflector plate right here. I've seen people get them little ones that go right over the fire pot. It's not enough. Even with this big thick one that I have right here, it still stays about 50 degrees hotter in the center which I can work with, especially when I'm going low and slow or grilling, really doesn't bother me. That kind of fixed all my major issues. Another big problem that I had with this grill was it takes forever for it to come up to temp. I mean, when, when, once you set this thing on 350, you might as well get ready to wait 45 minutes to an hour, especially in the winter. But even in the summer when it's 100 degrees, it still takes 45 minutes to get up to 350 unless you put this thing on high, as high as it'll go, and then it'll come up to temp in about 20 to 30 minutes, wherever you want it to be. But a lot of times when I do that, I forget that I got it on 500, and then I notice it later, and I'm like, oh man, my food's you know getting way too hot here. So, I mean, I've gotten used to it now that I've had this thing for eight months, but in the beginning, it was a pain and it aggravated me. Overall, I think this is a pretty good grill for the price point. Um, when I bought this grill in October 21, I paid 475 for it. Uh, last time I checked at my local Walmart, it's June of 22, it was 579.99. Still a great deal. The thing is well built and it also has a five year warranty. And with those couple items that I told y'all about, the smoke tube and the heat deflector plate, which you can get both on Amazon, will fix majority of the big issues that I had with this thing. But would I buy this grill again? 
I probably wouldn't. I would go ahead and upgrade now that I know that I like having the pellet grill. Before I was on the fence, uh, I like the Weber Smoky Mountain, and I just kind of was looking to, you know, get another toy to play with on the patio. Now I know I need it or I want it, so I would I would upgrade. I, I mean, I might get a, a Rec Tech or something like that, a little more expensive with with some uh, with some less issues uh, that I had with this in the beginning, and maybe a little bigger cooking area. So I hope I answered all y'all's questions. If you have anything else, comment below. I will try to answer them the best that I can. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Till next time.